Have you ever watched your favorite streamer or YouTuber just W key into a fight, giga chad, wipe a four man and come out unscathed, only to wonder why every time you try to do that, you just fall over dead before you fire a single bullet? Well, I'm gonna tell you. There are a lot of things to consider all at once when you're in a fight, and your ability to consider all those things and make an effective decision is gonna determine whether you win or lose. Generally speaking, the best way to get better at Tarkov is to just die a lot and learn from your deaths, but in this video, we can learn from my deaths as we watch some clips where I died, we can pull these lessons out so hopefully you can die less and start surviving more. So how do you learn to be effective at just W keying in and being the Giga Chad, being aggressive and winning these fights like these best players in the world? Well, first of all, if you actually pay a little bit closer attention to these really, really good players, you'll see that that's not always what they do. They'll oftentimes take the time to slow down, get an audio cue, back away from a fight when they're out of ammo or when they need to heal. And that's kind of the big thing here is that when you see people just push in and they, the Giga Chads just rush in and win a fight, what we don't see is there's lots of decisions going on behind the scenes that led them to that decision. How many enemies are there? Have they killed some? How much ammo do they have left? How much health do they have? Have they tagged one up and they know he's hurt? Do they hear a reload? Map knowledge is huge. How many exits do I have? Do I want to get to a better position? And that leads me to make this maneuver. All of these things happen in the background that lead them to those really quick decisions on when to push, when to reposition, when to fall back. And they're so good at it that they can come out ahead on fights and it ends up manifesting in us just going, well, I think I should be more aggressive. I'm trying to push in and I always die. So what we'll do is we'll watch a few clips from my stream where I died, one where I should have been more aggressive and one where I should have been more passive and talk about some of these decisions that go on behind the scenes so that you can start surviving more of your raids. So what we'll do is we'll watch one of the clips back in its entirety and then we'll go back and kind of break down what I should have done in this situation. Every time I try to jump there, I get skamazed. Every time. So always fun to watch back clips of yourself dying, but you can almost like see what I was talking about towards the back end of that clip where I'm basically just trying to W key in the back half when I'm in the fight of that guy. I'm just like moving around, you know, pulling U-turns, just pushing every guy I see. I'm just trying to be aggressive and try and regain control of the fight. I've lost any advantage I have and I can't seem to get it back. And we'll talk about that. The first half of the clip was kind of boring, but that's important. You see me just sitting here trying to, you can even see on my face, I'm just trying to figure out how many people there are. I'm trying to focus on the footsteps. The audio down here is really bad. I see this flashlight. I think he's gonna push way more aggressively. I'm not sure if he knows where I am and comfort is everything. I'm uncomfortable here because I don't like playing reserve too much. I have a general layout of how the map flows down here, but I'm not really, really good at it. And I'm always afraid that other people have the better map knowledge and are gonna get flanks on me. So what I end up doing is often I'm very passive. Comfort is confidence. If you put yourself in a place where you're more comfortable, you're gonna be more confident making that decision. 
and I keep myself in this weird spot here. When I was reflecting on it, I was like, man, behind me is the worst place for me to push because of that water that we'll see I run into in a minute. It's a really hard place to make a flank back there because it's a really long hallway with no doors. And then you have to jump over that stupid water right here while they were figuring out what was going on. I could have jumped across, taken cover here, maybe thrown a nade or bounced the nade off this wall and made it up to this ramp off to my right, which gives me at that point, three, four, five different options. I could go down towards T2. I could go up towards one of the buildings. I could make a flank and come down to the left. Or if I had bounced the nade off this building and maybe you know, threw some shots down there, I could have full sprinted up the staircase that's directly to my right here and gone up to, I think that's the queen building or king building or whichever. There were a lot of other places I could have gone, but the map knowledge wasn't there, the confidence wasn't there, and I keep myself in this really weird position for a really long time. We end up do training shots. Uh, I definitely should have had my flashlight on to counter his flashlight. This is pretty brutal. I can't even see my reticle at this point, so it's hard to figure out where the source of the flashlight is coming from to kind of aim at it. I trade some shots. I should have had my my flashlight on. I thought maybe if he heard me that I could maybe get a really quick repeek there, uh, but it just didn't end up working out. I took some shots. I tried to repeat it. He hit me a few times. So at this point, now I've taken damage and I'm trying to get away. I do move towards the one flank I know in this position if I've boxed myself in, which is to, you know, get up to the bishop here, but I miss the jump. And then once again, the confidence completely leaves. You see me here. Literally, I miss the jump. I hit the water. I figure they heard me hit the water. They're going to push. So I turn around. Then I go back in the water. I'm like, no, Jesse, that is the play. And then I freaking get scared again and I go back up this committing to that decision probably would have been better there ends up being a lot of time here where what most likely happened is they saw me take that right side peak and they kind of hunkered down and was waiting for me to take it again or waiting for it to see what I was going to do. So I should have taken that opportunity to flank. And because of all of this indecision, because I couldn't really commit to what I wanted to do, then I end up just being like, we'll just be the Giga Chad. I push, I try and move over here. And then they start surrounding me. There's so many people. I don't really have a good right side. I'm taking all left side peaks. Their flashlights are still on. Mine aren't. This guy ends up going prone here. I thought I killed him, but he was prone. I haven't reloaded. I've got 30 round mag. I see the second one there. And so now I know that there's three and this is just kind of over. I, you know, I probably just whiff my shots here. I could have downed this guy, but even in this situation, if I kill this guy with how much health I have left and the fact that that would have been the end of my magazine, I'm pretty much toast here. Ultimately in this fight, it was like indecision. This was a fight I should have been more aggressive, but aggressive with my decision making. Early on, like we said, I could have aggressively taken the fight, held the right side peak, used my flashlight and maybe picked them off one by one, or I could have aggressively made a flank, made a decision and got out of this really uncomfortable situation. So this is where indecision and me playing too slow and too passively really, really got me killed here. So now we can take a look at the absolute flip side where I was too aggressive in a really stupid way and playing more passively would have helped me. I didn't get him. Oh, yo, he's gonna name himself. <laughs> no! There's two of them. So another nice little embarrassing death. Actually, upon further inspection, I didn't die behind that wall. I was just so hurt from all of those shots that as soon as I took a step, I fell over dead. Anyway, with this clip, it's kind of, once again, the opposite. So we're set up here. As you can see, a lot of the decisions I made in this clip was because I had a duo. In these really tight corners, I mean, literally a two-man pushes down the staircase. We're trying to hold the staircase. This gets really dangerous with team kill territory or stacking up where you and your buddy are so close to each other that your whole team can be eliminated really quickly. So a lot of the decisions I made were to try and avoid that from happening. I kind of whiffed the shots here 
Uh, I whiffed the opportunity. I could have been all the way up against the door or further back. I didn't give myself a big window here to get this kill. I'm trying to use the laser down here so that he doesn't see the laser. If the laser was on the wall there, I would imagine he wouldn't have pushed down. But then my reaction time kind of sucked there and I didn't really... His head wasn't even really visible because once again, I didn't give myself a good sight line there. So I fall back. They're, they start throwing nades and we kind of do the ring around the rosy here. Every time I move up, they throw another nade. Jay closes the door on him and we think for a second he's going to nade himself, but he probably had an M67, so he got away. And then I actually really like this position I take here where I step up onto the tarps. Uh, being a little bit higher than normal will oftentimes buy you a little bit more time because a lot of people are really used to shooting center of mass or head height. So putting yourself a little bit higher helps. Sometimes crouching can do the opposite effect if they're shooting center of mass and you're crouching. Well, now your head is where center of mass would be. So I like this position that I take. I'm up higher. He's got it. I don't really want to be taking a left side on this door. I hate fighting through these little windows. I always feel like I get head tapped. So I'm not super opposed to this position they push and once again i'm trying to not shoot jay i'm trying to make sure that i understand his decision we hear them heal he goes for the push when i see him open this door i step off of this because if he pushes in i want to be able to push in behind him but I, once again i don't want to be shoulder to shoulder with him they start shooting so i back up i see that he's going to push and this ends up being really unfortunate where I don't want to shoot Jay and this guy's shots at Jay hit me in the legs and kind of messed me up really bad. And this is the big thing here where we talk about all the decisions that lead to a good push or how you should play. I didn't even really realize or consider that at this point I have a heavy bleed, two blacked out limbs and my whole body is at least a little bit red. Jay says that that was a little bit of a sloppy swing. He dies and I'm thinking, well, I'm going to get this guy on the reload, not realizing that it was two. There was a guy tight in this corner reloading and then there was this guy. I made my swing way too wide here and this whole decision was bad. Everything we just talked about. I am way too hurt to be making this push. Uh, this guy backs up to go for the reload. I could have got a grenade in here and then ran away. This is a classic example of a push you'd never see one of the best players in Tarkov make because of this, because they're in a tight angle. I still don't know exactly how many there are. They killed my teammate and I'm at half health. Why would I take this fight? Why would I push this? I just got into that mindset again, into the W key, be aggressive, Tarkov favors aggression. And this was a really bad push. I push way too wide. I'm not sure how many there are. I'm low. I'm I'm not even at head height and this all goes downhill and I lose because I just think we'll be aggressive. It's labs. Be aggressive. Be the aggressive Chad. Any other decision than that would have bought me time to turn this fight around. I could have gotten the grenade in. I could have completely repositioned down there in the basement of labs. There's tons of ways you can go. I could have gone back by the I think it's the G button and then flanked around. I could have actually gone all the way down the hallway up and then pushed down the stairs on them while they were looting Jay's body. Lots of decisions where being more passive, where pulling back, healing up, and getting myself ready for this fight would have helped, but I tried to be the Giga Chat and just push. So I hope that these two clips kind of show you those sides where it's more than just being aggressive. It's more than just being like the streamers and pushing in and engaging a five man. It's learning when you should be aggressive and when you should be passive. It's learning all the decisions that go on in the back of your head, considering your health, how many there are, all of these things. And if you're not comfortable in the fight, then get to a place where you are comfortable, get to a position on the map, get to an angle you're comfortable with. Uh, all of these things lead you to being effective. And the more effective you are, the more confident you are. And that snowballs. And that's how you see these guys with thousands of hours of experience able to take on these crazy fights. It's not random. It's not just good flicks. It's all of these other things going on in the background. So if you like this video and found it helpful, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I stream Escape from Tarkov almost every single day on Twitch. All my links will be down below. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord server is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.